Hi, everybody. We're back. This is Dave Vellante, and we're live here at AT&T Park, the NetApp customer event. NetApp each year, the last two years, has brought its leading customers into AT&T Park. It's an unbelievable venue that they set up. They really stepped it up this year. I'm Dave Vellante with Wikibon.org, and this is the Cube Silicon Angles production. What we do with the Cube is we go to events like this, wherever the tech athletes are, we find the best guests, and we extract the signal from the noise and share with you, our audience, the information on the trends that are occurring in the business. Now, one of the major trends that has occurred over the last three or four years is this notion of converged infrastructure. And NetApp and Cisco have had a very tight relationship. NetApp seized the day. They saw the opportunity to participate in that converged infrastructure space. Cisco, of course, aggressively trying to change the whole model of compute, bringing compute and networking together, and of course, needed the storage piece as well. So I'm here with Jim, Jim McHugh, uh, who's with Cisco, a Cube alum, and also Adam Four with NetApp. Gentlemen, welcome to the Cube. Good to be here. Yeah, thanks for having me, Dave. So it's a great venue. Um, you guys are longtime partners. Why don't we kind of start there? Um, Jim, why don't you talk a little bit about the, the partnership, the objectives that you guys set yeah, forth several yeah. years ago now? Yeah, so if you go back three years or so ago, I believe it is, you know, we set out with an objective of how we're going to do a solution that's going to address multi-tenancy. And out of that grew a product that became known as FlexPod. Um, so we've been actually doing incredible success. We have now over 2,800 customers. 2,800, yeah. 2,800 exactly. customers, partner base growing. Everything's just really going well from that standpoint. But you know, this last year, as all good tech companies do, right? When you you have a lot of success, you re up. So we decided, you know, we actually needed to reaffirm our relationship, and we said we're going to set out for another three-year journey and actually really drive the solutions that our customers are looking for. So when you say you re-up, you, so you, you committed publicly to doing a sort of a, a, a three-year engagement? What is it? So what does that entail? You guys both putting resources in. Talk about uh, 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 the, the resources that you guys put together. Maybe Adam, you could take it from the NetApp side and then you know, Jim can come through on the... Yeah, Cisco so we, we um, basically got together and actually planned out a roadmap. And in that roadmap, uh, it includes kind of what we're doing on the engineering side, it includes what we're doing go-to-market, and uh, includes just how we're going to work together uh, really at a st strategic level. And so what we've done is uh, defined a, a, a strategy and where we're going to take FlexPod over the next three years. Uh, new markets we're going to go into, uh, different environments that it's going to work in, and then now we're moving toward kind of executing on that. Yeah, so uh, let's talk about some of those in environments. When you start a project like this, you know, Jim, you guys were sort of the new kid on the block yep. in the compute business, and so, um, I'm sure you've learned a lot, uh, and, and actually, wh what, are the, what are some of the things that surprised you about getting into that business, and what are some of the you know, pleasant or unpleasant surprises that you've, you've been dealing with? Well, I mean, I don't know if surprised. I, I'm going to almost go that we surprised a lot of people in the market. I'm actually, I have to admit, when, I, when Cisco got into the server business, I wasn't at Cisco, and I was one of those guys on the outside saying, really, they're, they're getting into this business? But clearly, they caught the market at a transition where compute and networking was going to come together first, right? There's a lot of value in that. And I think that was pretty revolutionary. But it didn't take long for us to say, look, networking makes a lot of sense, but you got to have storage, right? You got to bring those together. And that's when you start having these questions of integrated infrastructure, converged infrastructure, and really that's become the game changer. So when I think uh, to the evolution of NetApp that I've been following now for several years, you guys evolved again from an you know, infrastructure player and then started to get really into the application integration space and I noticed that with FlexPod and, and, and you know specifically in Cisco generally you guys focusing more on applications Absolutely. so Adam I wonder if you could talk a little bit about that thrust you know from a solution standpoint right. what the uptake looks like and we can maybe get into some of the major ones right so with FlexPod the kind of design point is to really build out a um, converged infrastructure an entire um, kind of virtualized infrastructure and that infrastructure is designed to support uh, a multi-tenant environment with multiple applications and so when you look at what we're doing with the applications, we're validating uh, these different kind of enterprise applications on this virtualized infrastructure. So it's, it's less about kind of building a silo, say, for Oracle, but building a, a shared infrastructure that can support Oracle and Microsoft and SAP, and what, what's the design requirements and what's the uh, system requirements that would actually allow you to support all these different items. So the, de the, the work we do is, is how do you size and configure to support these different environments. Yeah. So that's really the validation process we go through. Oh, so that's a, so that's a, a, a nuance. You're not mm -hmm. purpose building infrastructure for those specific environments. You're building infrastructure that can, it's like the Dave Hitch chart that shows <laughs> sort of. Yeah, yeah, right. exactly. <laughs> and then maybe there's some applications that, that keep running on, 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 on bare metal that, that might yeah. not be virtualized, but, but so 
So you basically say to the customer, we've tested this configuration, right. it works, yep. we can show you best practice, documentation. Yep. Now, like who does what in that whole thing? You guys get together, you got joint labs, how does that all work? Well, so I think there's a couple things that go in there. I mean, so when we decide to set off on what we call Cisco validated designs, and we do those with NetApp. Mm -hmm. So we start on our, our components, the compute networking, we bring in the NetApp part of the storage and add it in from there. But I think the thing that we do next, and it's you know part of the flex of FlexPod, it's multiple platforms. So we're looking at, if it's an application that'll run better on Hyper-V, vSphere, it could run better on you know some of the open source stuff that's coming along and OpenStack, et cetera. Those are things we're looking at. How do we first best address the application through that infrastructure software? Then we test that all the way down, right down through every component and element of the infrastructure. So whether compute, network, and storage, and have that all built in. So three years ago, we started, uh, in 2010 was our first cube at, at VMworld. We really weren't talking about Hyper-V. You know, it was sort of VMware, had a clear lead, still has a lead in a lot, a lot yeah. of situations, you know, toting the customers. But at the time, you know, Hyper-V was sort of, you know, Microsoft version one, right? You knew yeah. it was going to get better, right. and it has. Mm -hmm. So can you talk a little bit about what you're seeing in sort of other, whether it's hypervisors, other frameworks like OpenStack, mm -hmm. how does that fit in to your guys' strategy? Maybe Adam, you could start, and Jim. Yeah, I mean, the, the platform is designed to support all of those, right? So we actually validate uh, VMware, always the latest versions of VMware, so we're trying to stay in sync with uh, the latest releases. Microsoft, uh, latest versions of Hyper-V, uh, we'll also validate System Center on top of that as well, so it's got the uh, the cloud orchestration or the automation uh, included, uh, Citrix, Zen Server, along with Zen Desktop, and it's also validated as a bare metal configuration. So you look at some of the validated designs, it'll actually be a mix of, say, SAP on, um, on virtualized VMware infrastructure and then the database part of it on a bare metal. And so these are all, and they can all run simultaneously. So the whole point is that this is an open environment that yeah. you can mix and match uh, these different technologies. And that extends to the management layer. So OpenStack, uh, CloudStack, all those uh, technologies are really uh, built to, or not, or FlexPod is built to really support those environments. Yeah. Yeah, so, I wonder if, um, you know, you see a lot of demand today yeah. for, for bare metal, despite the, so you hear talk about, you know, we heard Carl up there today saying that it's an imperative to get 100% virtualized. Yeah. Mm -hmm. but, you know, most customers are moving in that direction, but there's still demand for bare metal. Right? Well, even for some of the newer things coming out, SAP HANA runs better on bare metal than it does. It doesn't run very well in a virtualized state right now. But it's a big trend. People are doing it. We're doing a lot of business together mm -hmm. and going out and talking to customers about it. And then there's just some applications that, yeah, that workload belongs on bare metal. Yeah, okay. So, so what are you seeing in terms of, of workload? Let's take it from the sort of workload out now. We talked about the infrastructure and its ability to essentially support, it was pretty much workload agnostic is essentially yeah. what you're saying, but you've done some validation. Where are you seeing uptake in the market? I mean, obviously Microsoft, Oracle, you know, VMware, not really a, a workload, but it's sort of a yeah. platform. Right. But Microsoft and Oracle in particular, you're seeing a lot of uptake. How about, you know, big data? Talk a little bit about the applications that you guys yeah. are seeing. Yeah, we, we see all those. So um, primarily a lot of the enter enterprise applications, so Oracle, SAP, all the Microsoft enterprise applications is probably the majority. We also see quite a bit of uh, virtual desktops. Mm -hmm. uh, virtual desktops uh, are appealing for this type of platform because people tend to want to deploy a, uh, a uh, kind of a brand new uh, infrastructure deployment. And sizing for virtual desktops can be very complicated. So if you've got an infrastructure that's been sized specifically for that environment, and it's sized across the entire stack. It's kind of an easy decision, you know that's going to work for the yeah. environment that you're looking for. And then your, your last point around big data, that's, that's one of the new things that we just introduced. Now big data actually, um, especially analytics in Hadoop, actually has some different types of architectural requirements. There's a um, design around uh, compute nodes with uh, direct attached storage. So there's a, there's a FlexPod platform that we've built specifically for that, we call FlexPod Select. And uh, today we validated uh, Cloudera Hadoop and Hortonworks Hadoop on that architecture. And it's really designed to provide kind of an enterprise class um, availability and the delivery of uh, Hadoop environments. Jim, I wonder if you could talk about cloud service providers. I mean, Cisco, yeah. you know, enormous company, obviously you know, powering a lot of CSPs. What's the uptake been like uh, specifically 
for this initiative in yeah. the cloud service provider market? Actually, the uptake is really, really, really strong. And, and I think both of us, when we look at it, we see IT as the future. And we understand that some people are going to go to a service provider and consume services, and some people are going to have things on premise. And really, as IT becomes a broker, we know and we are setting out together to go after and give solutions that hit that service provider. They have different needs, and again, they're going to be looking for sort of different platforms because as they start building out applications that run more as a service or things that need to be in true multi-tenancy, high availability sort of situations, that may not be what an enterprise is going to be running in is their data center. So it could be a different platform on top of a FlexPod mm -hmm. to solve that. Do you think, um, let's see, okay, so we're 2013. You, you feel like 2014, we've been talking about it for a while. You think 2014 will be the year of the hybrid cloud? There's always <laughs> the year of something, yeah. isn't there? Yeah. Right, I mean, the concept was great when you first heard about it, and then you start to think about the details and the implementation was a little yeah. stickier, but talking to customers, it's it's starting to become more real, certainly for things like you know backup and disaster recovery. We're starting yeah. to see workloads and applications. What are you guys seeing? I, I think we may find that the word hybrid cloud, the definition needs to change. Like, we talked about hybrid cloud, like it was this idea that I could have something here and I would burst out that same workload into the web, and yeah, into the you know public cloud. Yeah, that's going to happen, but I think really the true hybrid cloud that's coming on is that you're going to have infrastructure that can support multiple platforms that are targeting applications in different locations that are going to enable customers to say, here's my hybrid cloud. I don't need to run this stuff in house. Whether it's HR, payroll, you know, my ERP, and this stuff I do need to run in house and I want them to talk to each other and I want data to move around. That's a hybrid cloud of the future. So you see that hybrid as a service offering that's in the catalog. Yeah. Oh yeah, you want to run it in a yeah. you know public cloud, lo lower cost or whatever. Maybe more flexible. Maybe it's not lower cost. Maybe yeah. it's you know more more flexible and faster, as opposed to federating applications. Of right? course, you could federate applications, but I think we got lost and that was the goal. The goal is giving our customers the solutions they need and, and the way they run it. And that's when you solve that problem, and you help the service providers help them solve that problem as well we have a better solution. Yeah, and that's an infrastructure play, where sure. the, the federated applications, you know, this, the business value there comes out, some guys gets fuzzy because it's it, it's complicated, yeah. right? Any, anything you'd add to that, Adam, or? Yeah, I mean, uh, um, there's definitely a, a move towards the hybrid cloud or hybrid IT environments. Um, you know, it's going to take some time. There's definitely some challenges that need to be overcome, kind of managing across these different environments is, is still a big challenge. Uh, but I, I see a lot of uh, vendors that are actually trying to address that. So, but yeah. you know, as soon as that gap gets solved, I think you'll s see it accelerating even faster. So, how would you guys characterize the first three years? Um, you know, kind of the bumper sticker characterization, yeah. and and talk about the objectives for the for the next three years. Well, I think the first three years was looking at solving this multi-tenant, building on a product, flexpod the architecture. How does it work? And the next three years, we've kicked off by saying that there's actual several families of FlexPod. Right. Right, so we talked a bit about FlexPod Select, targeting workloads, FlexPod Data Center, which we could almost call FlexPod Classic, that mm -hmm. everybody knows and loves. <laughs> and then, you know, we have FlexPod Express, which is more for branch office, mid-market, is from there. So I think the next three years is preparing for giving customers, no pun intended, the flexibility to roll out infrastructure that's going to help them grow their business. Yeah, really. And, and it's not just about being agile, because everybody talks about being agile. It's purposefully agile. What are you going to do with that agility? Right, so um, anything you'd add to that in terms of, of, of objectives you know, going yeah, forward? Yeah, it's, it's really extending that FlexPod uh, model out to more areas, right? Exactly. Supporting more workloads, extending it into the cloud, extending it into small offices, multi-data center environments. Segmenting. Yeah, yeah. exactly. FlexPod, you know, super-sized flex. Flexpod, yeah, bigger, smaller, you know, uh, all Flexpod of them. Flexpod light <laughs> and up through the middle. All right, yeah. Jim and Adam, thanks very much for coming on the cube. Really appreciate it. You know, enjoy the rest of the night, and uh, all right. great. We'll talk to you soon. All right, keep it right there, everybody. We'll be back with our next guest, John Fernie, and I will be here all night. We'll be going until uh, almost nine o'clock Pacific time. So keep it right there. This is the cube. We're right back.